Maayong gabi and good evening to each and every one of us. Isang mapagpalang gabi sa ating lahat. Welcome to our webinar in Practical Research 1, Qualitative Research for Week 7 to 8 Lessons. To formally start our webinar for today, let us ask the guidance of the Lord through prayer. Okay, next natin. Okay, next. Let us bow our heads and put ourselves in the holiness of God. Dear Almighty and ever loving God, we glorify and thank your name. You have showered us with so much blessings in your presence. Continuously remind us of your faithfulness and guidance. With this, may we humbly ask you to shower our speaker today of our greatest inspiration so that he may share the most of his knowledge, heart and soul to his respective topic. May we also observe the invaluable knowledge experiences and put it into practice what we may learn today. We pray that you bless us all as we may be able to fulfill our tasks responsibly that the objective we have set may all be achieved. Your infinite blessing will mean the success of this webinar. May we be a living witnesses of your genuine love through the enactment of knowledge acquired through this activity. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to our webinar in Practical Research One. I'm Marie Eliza A. Tuazon, your moderator, who will be your host and guide for the entire webinar. To know more about me, I'm a graduate of Bachelor of Arts in Secondary Education, major in MAPE, and took up master's degree in Educational Management with distinction at Our Lady of Fatima University. Aside from my love for research, I'm also a music teacher and a soprano choir member. I'm currently working as public school teacher here in Dep Ed Division of Angeles City. Nice meeting you everyone and welcome to our webinar for today. Okay, let's start. Are you ready? Ready na ba kayo sa ating webinar for today? Yes. Yes, okay, yes. So if you are ready for our webinar for today, please give me a thumbs up. Can you give me a thumbs up? Kung ready na ba sila? Pwede ba makita yung mga thumbs up natin? Okay, ready na sila. So to start, I want you to take note of the word or words I am going to say in each part of the webinar. So you need to take note of the words that I'm going to say. Uh, you need to take note of the words and you will write it on a scratch paper. So the first one, who can type the whole sentence correctly at the end of the webinar will win a house and lot, brand new car, or a 1 million pesos. So kidding aside, you will win a prize if you can completely uh, write the sentence after the webinar. So you need to stay back and be with us for the entire webinar. Agree ba doon? Can you give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up? Are you staying with us for the entire webinar? Can you give me a thumbs up? So you need to complete the sentence and type all the words correctly. So at the end of the webinar, you need to write the complete sentence, okay? For our first word, you need to take note this one at your scratch paper. You need to write this one. For our first word, it is research. So you need to write research on your scratch paper. Later on, you can use that one. Okay. But this is only for our senior high school participants. For our um, professors, sorry, but you cannot join that one. Let's give chance to our babies, okay? So later, we will have a quiz for everyone. Don't worry. So, na ba your research? Later on, you can use that one. So next one, 
This event is an initiative of the EPCOR Educational Research Center under its, its advocacy project, Sagip Mananaliksik for Everyone, which main aim is to help student researchers all over the country, especially during this time of pandemic. It is through the hard work of Dr. Richard B. Sanchez, the founder and head research consultant of EPCOR. To give us a welcome message, let us call on Dr. Fahad A. Salendov. He is a graduate of Bachelor of Arts in Secondary Education, major in English, took up MA English Language Teaching and PhD in Educational Administration. He is a former instructor of SDI College Cotabato and recently an assistant professor of Sultan Kudarat State University. He is also the program chairman of education department and publication advisor in the said university. He, is, he also presented papers in national and international conferences. Once again, let's, big a big, big, let's give a round of applause to Dr. Fahad A. Solendal. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much to our uh, moderator, uh, Mantuazon. Thank you for that very kind uh, introduction. Well, actually, I am tasked to uh, uh, give to you um, uh, our my welcome message uh, to our ever dynamic research head consultant, Dr. Richard Sanchez, to our lecturer who will be introduced by our moderator later, and to my fellow uh, research consultants, teachers, and school administrators who are in attendance virtually. To, to the participants of tonight's webinar, a peaceful evening to each and every one. Once again, embracing the culture of research, Educational Research Center headed by Dr. Richard Sanchez aims to promote research culture and to contribute in improved society through academic inquiries and realizing the people conduct research for the ultimate goal of serving the Almighty through service to others. The threat imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic implies that one should have a positive mental attitude and be active in all undertakings to sustain the principle of research in all fields of studies. Tonight's event implies the eagerness and sincerity of all participants to embrace the culture of research even in times of pandemic. As what the DepEd secretary said, they won against the virus. Likewise, I would also say that we were victorious against the COVID-19 because the event was realized through God's grace. Let us take this opportunity to grow and innovate more for the welfare and betterment of our people whom we dearly serve. This event, will somehow give what is best to our students, teachers, school administrators, and especially to Almighty God who inspires us to innovate more for nation building. EdCore is here to help develop our students, teachers, and even school administrators. And it is in this reason why this event was realized. In EdCore, we actually ought to improve ourselves so that we can provide and produce a better quality learning experience among our stakeholders. Subsequently, reflect these experiences among teachers and students for the development of our nation. Lastly, let us continue embracing the culture of research and serving the Almighty through our service to others. Have a peaceful evening to everyone. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fahad A. Salenda for that inspirational welcome message. Okay, now ready our paper for our next words. If I told you to write down words, now ready your paper for our next words that are is a systematized. Write down is a systematized. The first one is research. Then now the, our next words are is a systematized. Okay, Max. Okay, next. 
The scope of today's webinar is quarter one, week seven to eight lessons, which are follow, which are follow ethical standards in writing related literature and present written review literature. These topics are based on the MELC or most essential learning competencies of the Department of Education. So let us move on with our general house rules. Let us watch a short clip about general house rules of this webinar. Please be reminded, reminded of the following house rules. First, be on time. As I saw before, it, we are on time. The next one is dress appropriately. Situate yourself in a place where there is no disruption. Turn off your microphone during the webinar unless you are asked to respond. Listen attentively to give respect to, to the speaker. Inquiries and clarification will only be entertained after the talk or if the speaker calls for it. Please use the chat box for your concerns. Wait until you are recognized and the facilitator will attend to you. Keep an open mind as you listen to the speaker. Respect co-attendants or co-participants. Should you have any concern about the webinar, you may chat personally the technical working group before, during, after the webinar. So thank you. So now we are on the most awaited part of this webinar, the talk proper of our speaker. So Dr. Philip Joseph Di Sarmento is an assistant professor of theology under the Christian Living Education Department, Institute for Christian Formation and Social Integration at Holy Angel University, Angeles City, Philippines. He is one of the founding member of the HAU Institutional Review Board. He graduated with the following degrees. Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, magna cum laude from the Mother of Good Council Seminary, City of Santa Fernando, Pampanga. Master of Arts major in Educational Management with high distinction from Holy Angel University, Angeles City and Doctor of Education major in Religious Education and Values Education from De La Salle University, Manila, Philippines. Dr. Sarmiento also attended a certificate course on Big History in 2018, held at the Dominican University of California, San Rafael, California, USA, where he was able to learn about the first year experience in US-based college education. Dr. Sarmiento is the auditor of the Religious Educator Association of the Philippines, Incorporated, a member of the Philippine Association for the Study of Culture, History and Religion, Incorporated, and Philippine Association for Teachers and Educators, Incorporated. Dr. Sarmiento has presented research papers to national and international conferences held locally and abroad, such as Australia and United States. His research interests are theology, religious education, spirituality, and Catholic education. He is also an associate editor and peer reviewer of 17 various international journals in religion, education, and social sciences. He has published research journals article in peer-reviewed ISI WS Club Private Analytics and Scopus Index Journal. So without further ado, let us give a big uh, sounding applause to Dr. Philip Joseph B. Sarmiento.
Sir Philip, your microphone. Sorry. So once again, uh, uh, thank you, Ma'am Eliza, for your kind introduction. And I would like to um, greet as well our research consultant, head research consultant, Dr. Sanchez, for giving me this opportunity to, to render uh, a community service to our uh, senior high school researchers and other research enthusiasts. I would also like to uh, welcome our participants for this webinar for our week seven to eight a practical research one on qualitative research. Before I proceed, may I would like to see the raise of hands of those who were able to attend the previous seminar or webinar, which is about um, how to do literature review last week. So can I see a raise of hands of those who were able to attend the seminar because I was the one who uh, did also the presentation. Wala po ba? Dr. Sanchez is... Can I see a raise of hands or thumbs up for those who were able to attend? Or are you all new for this webinar? Okay, so I think some, uh, Dr. Fahad also is uh, an attendee last time. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we can proceed to the presentation for today. So let me share screen. So again, so our webinar for today will focus on the, as I mentioned, as I mentioned by our moderator, will be focused on practical research one in qualitative research with seven to eight, which is part and parcel of your most essential learning competencies or MELTs in the division in the Department of Education. So as I have mentioned, or as we have mentioned, this webinar. Uh, aims to provide uh, ideas and learnings on how to do literature review in following certain ethical standards. So the objectives of this webinar are based on the MELCs for week seven to eight, and that at the end of the session, participants will be able to follow ethical standards in writing related literature and present written literature or review of related literature. Because uh, in the previous session, yung weeks five to six, we discussed about how to cite properly, how to, uh, to, to know the references properly. So what's the distinction of, of uh, the black spots and the blind spots in literature review. So for this portion, we will be talking about the ethics behind literature review and what are the most pressing issues that researchers may be facing in doing literature review. And then later, I'll be giving my personal experiences on how to present a written review of literature. So let's now proceed to the presentation. So first, how do we ensure that we follow ethical standards in reviewing related literature? So what are the basis? Ano ba yung mga sinusunod nating panuntunan? At ano ba yung mga kailangan nating tignan para masabi natin that we are really following the right thing in literature review. When I say the right thing, we are following ethical standards in citing literatures or using the ideas of others in presenting our literature review. I think the most pressing issue, one of the major issues when it comes to ethical standards in literature review is what we call plagiarism. So plagiarism is one of the major concerns in research ethics, especially in literature review. Because sometimes researchers may tend not to properly cite, not to properly uh, acknowledge the references that they, they use in doing their literature review. That is why I will focus my presentation in terms of ethical standards or ethical ethicality in terms of the, the review of related literature in the aspect of plagiarism and how plagiarism is being uh, committed in literature review and in research in, in general. So let's proceed. So first, let's define what plagiarism is. And I'm getting this definition 
from the American Psychological Association of the Philippines, uh, American Psychological Association, sorry. So according to the APA, or American Psychological Association, plagiarism is the act of presenting words, ideas, or images of another as your own. So it denies authors or creators of content the credit they are due. Whether deliberate or unintentional, plagiarism violates ethical standards in scholarship. So sometimes, uh, dalawang bagay yung pwede mangyari sa plagiarism. Whether you intentionally copied or you unintentionally copied. Or sometimes, you did not cite properly. That's why you are committing plagiarism. So, para bang ano to, no? Uh, sino ba ang tunay na may-ari no? ng mga ginawa? Or sino ba ang tunay na nagmamay-ari ng isang ideya? So again, in literature review, it is very, very important to note that when we did not cite properly the references in our, in our review, we may commit or we may do what we call plagiarism. So uh, let me continue. Another definition, according to Cadill Carr, which was published in 2018, plagiarism is one of the most serious forms of misconduct as it implicates intellectual theft. I would like to, to, to focus on the term misconduct. So umaga, hindi katanggap-tanggap ang pangungopia no, ng mga ideya ng iba. And this is as if you are uh, doing theft pag nanakaw. Actually, if we will look into the word plagiarism, according to Cadill Carr, uh, plagiarism comes from the Latin term plagiare, which means to steal or to kidnap. So when we commit plagiarism, we are kidnapping, we are stealing the idea of the others. That's why in literature review, it is very, very important no, to acknowledge who the real authors are because when we do not do that and claim it as, it, as our own, then we are committing plagiarism. Okay? Para bang sa, ano, no, sa, sa kwento ng pagmamahalan, una siyang naging akin. O kaya... Akin siya, inagaw mo siya. Sa, ano? Hindi po pwede yung kanta ni Moira dito, yung ipahubaya. Hindi po pwede yun. Kasi when we are dealing with literature, you should really cite the real honor of it. Okay. So let's continue. According to Gray et al. in 2019, they published a research article talking about plagiarism. And according to, to them, there are forms and characteristics of plagiarism. So let me just uh, somehow uh, give you an idea of the brief descriptions that they have mentioned. According to Gray et al., there are forms and characteristics of plagiarism, and they have what we call uh, brief descriptions. The first type or of plagiarism is what we call word plagiarism. So, word plagiarism is covering others' words or figures without quotation marks or citation. So, it means to say that this is the material. Okay, for example, this is the material. Uh, this is just a, 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 an example. For example, the author mentions love is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an experience of happiness. So, for example, I mentioned that in my publication. Sarmiento, 2020. Love is a happy experience. And then you did a literature review about love. You cite, you saw my work and then put that in your literature review without citing me. Then you are committing word plagiarism. Because Again, you did not recognize my work or my word. Or sometimes, dito rin siguro yung mga tinatawag natin mga quotable quotes. Okay, quotable quotes. So these are 
uh, ano, these are quotes that should be referred to the real authors or real, what we call this, uh, uh, persons who, who made mention of that. So that is the first type of plagiarism or form of plagiarism. When we did not recognize and put quotation for the exact word that the authors mentioned. Another type of plagiarism is idea plagiarism. So from the term itself, idea, you are using others' ideas, designs, models, or processes without permission. So it means to say that you are not citing them or you are not asking permission for, from them when you cite them. Okay? So for example, the idea of, of this, this invention, and then you say, uh, this this uh, idea came from you, and yet you did not really do it, but you, you just copied it from another inventor or author, then you are committing plagiarism. And then this is the most common form of plagiarism. This is what we call self-plagiarism. Pwede po ba yun, sir? Self-plagiarism? Eh, paano yun? Eh, ikaw naman yung author eh. Hindi ba pwedeng ulitin? Okay? Hindi ba pwedeng ulitin or gamitin yung idea na to kasi ikaw naman ang nagsulat? Mind you guys, that self-plagiarism happens when you are duplicating a publication or copying one's own publication, okay? Or figures without citation or copyright agreement. So it means to say, for example, I publish this article and yet I, I am trying to publish another one and then one idea that, that is incorporated in my new article is not citing the previous article that I have. So it means to say, even if it's yours, you need to cite yourself because you already published that idea. So see, kahit ikaw na yung may-ari, kapag hindi mo in-recognize yun, you are also committing self plagiarism and that's also a no no as uh, i don't know no sa konteksto ng mga estudyante kung minsan ito ako as a professor sometimes may mga nauhuli ako no yung bang alimbawa magkaka-connect yung mga ano yung mga assignments no? lalo na ngayong online no or yung mga pinapagawa lalo na sa amin sa field namin more mostly mga reflection papers something like that kung minsan siguro other students are not aware that they are only doing recycling of their previous reflection, for example. Pero kung minsan, parang masasabi mo as a teacher, parang nabasa ko na to ha, sometimes sa previous submission. So see, kapag ganoon, if you are not citing the previous work, then you are also committing self-plagiarism. Lalong-lalo na kapag published ang isang work. So may I take note of that. Publish or if it's a book or a journal article, that's really a no-no. Another one is translation plagiarism. Okay, it means from the word self-translation, you are trying to translate articles into different languages without acknowledging the original author. For example, this, uh, this idea or this phrase is in Japanese. And then you would like to use it in Filipino or you try to translate it in Filipino without acknowledging the real author, the real uh, author with the real language that was used, then you are also committing plagiarism. And then the, another type or form of plagiarism is what we call sources plagiarism. So when we say sources, using incomplete or not detailed information about the source. Kulang-kulang yung citation. O kung minsan, direct quotation pala, walang page number. Okay, sometimes ako commit ito. Kaya kung minsan naman, uh, kinuha, sa, kinuha sa internet. No? Pero wala siyang retrieve from or wala siyang URL. No? So see, this is a, a, a problem in literature review. And then there is also the problem of ghost and guest writing. 
So, including unjustified or honorary authorship. Kaya, yung iba, no? O, gawin mo na lang ito. Okay, ikaw sumulat, tapos uh, ibigay mo sa akin. So, as if you were the ones who wrote it. So, again, that's form of plagiarism. So, now, Another another instance that was mentioned by Khalil Carr, she cited Mehik and Gagnabel about the various forms of text and image plagiarism. Because text plagiarism is the most common, um, what you call this, plagiarism that is happening in literature reviews. First is what we call the mosaic or verbatim plagiarism. It is using the same words phrases or sentences exactly as it has appeared elsewhere without using a quotation. So it means to say verbatim, ibig sabihin ng verbatim, word for word. Word for word, you copied it. So sometimes in literature review, we do that. We put quotations. We put certain certain um, ideas that are, are, are called directly or kinuha mismo sa isang work ng isang author. However, as I mentioned in the previous uh, webinar, kung minsan yung paggawa ng ganoon ay depende, hindi hindi puro quotation ang literature review. Okay? Please be reminded, guys. Because a good literature review is a review in one's own words, actually. You are citing the idea of others in your own words and language. So, uh, that is a, a form of text plagiarism. When we do not cite properly the source. So, it means to say, uh, sometimes other researchers commit this. They just put the parenthetical citation or they just put the name of the author and then the year and then put what the person mentioned or the author mentioned or the or the or the reference uh, mentioned but they did not put the quotation marks if it's really coming from the author themselves okay authors themselves ibig sabihin hindi sila naglagay ng quotation marks eh, hindi naman pala yun own words yung ideas ng ng author so again that is another form of plagiarism and then another issue in literature review, which is connected with plagiarism, is what we call paraphrasing. Okay? Paraphrasing is using vast content from elsewhere by just changing the language. So when we paraphrase a certain idea and then we did not acknowledge the real source of it, we are committing plagiarism. And then cyber plagiarism from the term itself. Cyber, it comes from the internet sources. You copied certain internet sources and then put it in your paper or put it in your literature review. And sometimes you, uh, that will lead you also to what we call plagiarism. Another one is the issue of image plagiarism. That's why, guys, please take note. For those who are doing literature review using certain figures, if the figure is not yours, then you should acknowledge the source. Or the image is not yours, then acknowledge it. However, sir, what about you sa Facebook? Nakikita namin yung CTTO. Ano ba yung sabihin ng CTTO? O mga millennials, I think millennials kayo, you know that. What is CTTO? Anybody? My dear participants? Credits to the what owner. What is CTTO? Credits to the owner. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Acosta. Credits to the owner. So, sinasabi mo doon that that picture is not yours. So, that's that's actually parang you're doing literature of being, ano, no? Say you're citing that image is not yours. What if that is really the source of it or the real source of it or the real owner of the the real owner of the of, uh, ano, of the picture? Do we need to cite the, the real owner? Yes, if there is a possible way for you to mention, where did you get it? That's why sometimes kung kikita natin yung iba, meron silang parang hyperlink okay, sa, sa tabi ng image or sa baba ng image just to recognize that this image is not yours. Because guys, 
Some images are also being incorporated incorporated in literature review to emphasize something, no? Kaya ang komisa na kumikit din yung plagiarism sa mga images when they do not cite properly the real source of that image. Because again, if it's not yours, then acknowledge it. Acknowledge the real owner. Okay, it's not enough of original sources cited in the references. The source must be cited immediately below the image and must write reproduced with permission after obtaining due permission. Actually, ito, uh, totoo to sa mga publications. When we publish a certain image, if it's not yours, you need first to ask permission. Okay, but again, for researches like your thesis, uh, siguro hindi, pero hindi naman masyado kasi unpublished naman yung mga yan. Pero, you need to cite properly the owner of the image. Now, how do we avoid plagiarism? In order for us to better understand ethical standards in doing literature review. So these are some tips that I got from our authors, particularly from Kadilkar in 2018. First, honesty is the best policy. Okay, honesty is the best policy. I think this is this is self-explanatory. When we say honesty is the best policy, kung hindi sa'yo, wag mong kunin. O kung kinuha mo, sabihin mo kung kanino nang galing. Huwag kang mangagaw. Yan, sa panahon daw natin ngayon, maraming mga mangaagaw. No? Ganyan din po sa literature review. When we do literature review, we need to cite properly who the real owner is. Who the real author is. Why? Because it's not yours. Sometimes ito yung nangyayari, no? Minsan nadadakip yung mga ibang researchers. Alam na alam mo, hindi sa kanila. When you ask, as, I don't know if, if it happens already for some of you, yung, o kaya sa mga simple research papers na pinabagwa ng mga professors ninyo. Sometimes nakakatuwa, no? Yung iba, sasabihin, sir, sa akin po galing yan. Pero kung minsan kung titignan, no, babasahin mo, lalo na pa naman ngayon, no, na pinapas karamihan online, madali mong matrace. Okay, madali mong matrace kung hindi sa kanya or hindi. Ako, ang ginagawa ko, anong technique? Ikakapi ko yon And then ipipaste ko sa Google. At kapag kinlik ko yung Google, at may, may certain portion doon na directly link siya. Ah, this uh, paper did commit plagiarism. Pangungopya po yon And that is a form of cheating. Okay, so honesty is the best policy. You need to acknowledge your source in order to avoid plagiarism. If it's not yours, then acknowledge. Okay? Do not claim it as your own. Wag kang mangagaw kung hindi sa'yo. Okay. Another one. Cite properly the references. I think this is the most common failure in ethical standards in literature review. Why? Some researchers are not aware of the proper citations. However, I cannot review, I cannot give any, um, any more yung lecture na yun, pero you can watch that in EPCOR, how to cite properly. Because sometimes other researchers commit plagiarism unintentionally when they did not cite properly the references. Or sometimes siguro ang nangyayari ganito, no, yung, sa dinami-dami ng mga sinabi, sa dinami-dami ng mga kinuhang ideas sa iba, Ano nangyayari ko minsan? Lalo na kapag hindi kaagad nilalagay yung pinanggalingan o references, nakalimutan na kung kanino nang galing. That is why when you did not cite any 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 author for that matter, it is as if it's yours. And unintentionally, you are committing plagiarism then. So sometimes may mga ganoong mistakes ang mga certain authors or researchers. No? Yung, sa dinami-dami, okay? Sa dinami-dami, hindi sila, okay? Hindi na nila mahanap kung kanino nang galing yun. Kaya nga guys, just a technique. When you are doing literature review, kaagad yung lagyan kung kanino nang galing. In-text citation yan, or, or maglagay kayo ng reference link muna dyan, 
para later on, hindi kayo mahirapan when you properly write it. Okay? Kasi minsan ito yung failure. Kaya minsan nagko-commit ng plagiarism in literature review. Okay? So lalo na sa literature review. Alam na alam mo kapag hindi nang galing. Okay? No? Hindi nang galing sa sa'yo. Okay? Another tip. In doing literature review and to, to, to have this what we call ethical standards in literature review is intellectual humility. Okay? Intellectual humility. Aminin mo na hindi ito sa'yo. Okay? Mas ako bilib ako sa tao na nagsasabing ito nang galing ito sa kay ganito kesa sinasabi niya na nang galing sa kanya pero hindi naman totoo. Sabi nga nila, sa panahon daw ngayon, tanghali na lang ang tapat. <laughs> totoo ba yon <laughs> Sa panahon daw ngayon, tanghali na lang daw ang tapat. Pero sana in research, hindi lang tanghali ang tapat. All researchers are called for honesty. All researchers are called for your intellectual humility. So it's okay to cite sources. That is a form of humility. That you are acknowledging that this is not yours. Because in, in, that, in that matter, okay, you're trying to say to the world, okay, that this is not my idea. I am just adapting this from someone else. And that is part and parcel of humility. That is part and parcel of what we call intellectual humility. Huwag tayong mag-assume kung hindi sa atin. Yan. Kaya nga ako minsan, siguro sa pagmamahal, ganyan din, no? makakarelate tayo. Huwag muna tayong mag-assume kung hindi naman sa atin. Okay. So see, we can relate it to research na. Because uh, in writing literature review, it's important, okay, it's important to acknowledge your source. Huwag kang maglagay dyan kung wala siyang basis, okay? Now, how do we present literature? So I will be giving tips on how to present written literature. Uh, these are based on my personal experiences. So as mentioned by Ma'am Alisa, I already published uh, certain articles, so you can find me in Google Scholar. Just type my name in Google Scholar and then it will give you all the links of my researches and public published work. So now, these tips are based on my personal experiences, particularly in writing literature reviews. So let's uh, give the first tip. Tip number one, always write coherently. So in doing literature review, you need to write coherently. Anong ibig sabihin ng coherence? Anybody? May nabanggit na ba? Uh, do you know the term coherence? Anong ibig sabihin ng coherence? Anybody, my dear participants? Or is this the first time that you hear the word coherence? What do we mean by coherence? Sige nga. Guys, from the participants? Anybody? Huh? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng coherence? Coherence means you are trying to write in a manner that is connected with the other. Coherent. Ibig sabihin, magkakaugnay-ugnay. Okay? It is, it is writing as if you are reading a novel na may connection siya from one, uh, one section to the other. So a good literature review is a coherent literature. Okay? It means when you do a literature review as if parang may kwento siya. May connection siya sa isa't isa. Hindi yung parang hiwa-hiwalay siya. 
Okay, that's the first tip that you need to put into your mind. That when you do literature review, you need to write coherently para kang nagbabasa ng kwento. For example, uh, I mentioned this in the previous webinar. You're talking about pandemic. Okay, lalo na ngayon, we have COVID-19 pandemic. So, when you try to present literature review about pandemic, you need to have a sort of a storyline. So, doing literature review is parang you're presenting a storyline of what had happened in the field or what had happened already in the, in, the, in the body of knowledge about pandemic. And then, what are you going to do? You need to present it coherently. You need to show it. Okay? Okay, coherently. Write it coherently. Now, another tip that I would like to give you is this. Use conjunctive adverbs only when necessary. Or sometimes they call them conjunctions. These are the examples. In addition, however, consequently, likewise. Ano pa? Anybody who can give us example of, of what we call conjunctions or conjunctive adverbs? Therefore, ano pa? Yung mga yun, si ba, kung isa nakikita natin sa ibang mga literature review, nilalagay nila yon in order to connect. Pero again, let's be reminded that there is a proper usage of these conjunctive adverbs or conjunctive literature. Okay? Because, kuminsan, when we do literature review or in presenting our literature review, minsan nagiging distractions itong mga conjunctions na to. Na kuminsan, mas madaling basahin kung wala sila. Actually, kung minsan may mga nababasa din ako mga literature review, kahit alisin mo yung mga yan, the thought is the same. Pero again, I'm, what I'm telling you is that there are certain instances na kailangan mo sila talagang gamitin. Pero yung simula sa dulo ng yung, uh, simula ng yung literature review down to your, to your last literature, literature na babanggit pa rin yung mga yan, para bang nakakasahawa siya. Okay? So again, sabi nga natin kanina in tip number one, you need to write coherently. And how can you write coherently if there are certain conjunctions that are not actually synthesizing the work in itself? Or having this what we call uh, parang storyline. Kasi kumisan ito nga nagiging distraction sila. So kumisan kasi akala ng iba kapag nagay, naglagay na sila ng ganyan, ng mga however, in addition, moreover, furthermore, eh nagiging ano, mas scholarly yung kanilang ginagawang literature review. Actually, uh, according to what I've read, no, yung sinasabi ng ibang mga literature, kung minsan yun nga, mas nakakagulo sila sometimes. Again, what I'm telling you, you just use it when necessary. Another concept that I would like, no, very na nga drawing, no, din drawing na yung aking presentation. Number three, Always check the grammar of the literature review. Again, this is a basic principle, but sometimes, dahil sa pagmamadali natin, lalo na kung minsan, when we try to write it in our own words, sometimes may mga grammar lapses. I do not say na ako perfect na ako dyan. No, sometimes I do have some lapses. That is why you need to check from time to time your grammar. However, syempre, if you're not expert, you need to seek help for those from those who are expert in English. For example, you can ask the help of your English editors or English teachers, professors, or yung mga tinatawag natin mga grammarians, okay? And sometimes, meron din mga online tools to check grammar and spelling. Like, for example, yung Grammarly, okay? You, meron pa akong binigay dyan, yung Ginger Grammar Checker and the like. But however, guys, let's be reminded, sabi nga ni Dr. Richard last time, mas matalino ang tao kesa sa machine. Mas matalino ang tao sa technology. Uh, siguro to for an initial scan, maganda gamitin yung mga uh, 
mga online tools na yan for initial checks. Pero, the last person to check or the last thing to do really is to sub submit your work to a grammarian para mas talagang ma-check. Iba pa rin ang mataan ng tao kesa sa computer. So, these are just parang initial tools that you can use. But again, uh, yung iba kasing mga yan ay paid. No? Uh, I don't know if some of you already use Grammarly. Ako, ginamit ko na sometime. Ako usually kasi ginagamit ko yung Grammarly for spelling checks or kung minsan yung uh, dahil sa pagmamadali ko kasi kung minsan pag nagtatype ako, mas nauuna yung isip ko sa, sa, sa daliri ko. Kaya kung minsan may mga certain prepositions ako na iiwan o kaya nagkukulang ng da, ng, ng mga yon Kaya period. So, kung isa, ginagamit ko siya to initially scan my work. Pero afterwards, kapag nakita ko ng okay na siya sa Grammarly, babasahin ko pa siya ulit. Kasi kung minsan may mga spots din na hindi niya nababasa. So again, sabi nga natin kanina, we need to write the literature coherently. And part of coherence, syempre, is grammar and spelling. So let's take note of that. But the best way to do is to submit it to the English experts. Okay? Number four na tip. Again, in literature review, guys, avoid giving personal opinions and commentaries in literature review. Ayan nga, literature review. It should not come from you. It should come from the literature or studies that you have read. Kung minsan kasi, may mga, I don't know, this is, some, this is one of the failures of other researchers, no? They are failing in the sense na kung minsan, ang ginawa nila, na, no? Ginawa nila is this. Uh, nagbibigay na pala sila ng opinion nila. No? O kaya ng reflection nila. Na kung minsan, oh yeah, maaaring konektado siya sa, sa literature, pero again, no? Again, no? Uh, hindi pala siya konektado ay kung minsan nakakagulo pala siya kung minsan akala mo sa, sa literature pala yon pero hindi na pala siya okay hindi na pala hindi naman pala nanggaling talaga sa literature kaya kung minsan misleading yung mga yan no? uh, lalo na kung walang proper citation again kapag nilagay natin yan nakakagulo yan sa literature Personal opinions are not to be incorporated in literature reviews because it may affect no, yung coherence ng ginagawa natin. And then number five, again, this is another problem of other ano, no, mga writers. Yung, they need to present or you need to present the literature in a manner that is understood by ordinary people. As much as possible, when you write literature review, you write it in a manner na maintindihan siya ng common person o ng ordinaryong tao. Para bang sabi nga natin kanina, you are writing it, okay, you are writing it in a manner uh, of presenting the idea in your own words. Kumbaga parang ganito yan, no? ito yung pagkain, sinwalo mo siya, dinigest mo siya, at kung ano yung na-digest mo, nakuha mo, yun yung isusulat mo. Okay. So, researchers are reminded to avoid two technical terms. The simple explanation, the better. Okay? Uh, wag tayong gagamit ng mga highfalutin words. Sometimes yan ang problema, no? yung highfalutin words okay? in literature reviews. Yung para bang kapag binasa mo, kasi dudubo yung ilong mo, kasi hindi mo maintindihan kung ano yung sinabi. Again, a good literature review is a review that even ordinary persons can understand. Okay? Okay, understand what uh, the, the study has mentioned. And then number six. Aside from giving commentaries, okay, in literature review, you need to avoid what we call sweeping statements and jargons if no supporting literature are cited. Why? 
Ano ba itong mga sweeping statements? Ito yung mga tinatawag nating mga generalizations. For example, ah. Example lang po ito. Ay, yung mga kapampangan, mayayabang. Oh, again, yeah, that's a sweeping statement. Why? What is your basis in saying that kapampangas are mayabang? Again, that is a sweeping statement. Lalo na kung wala kang supporting literature to, to mention. Okay? O kaya, another sweeping statement. Ay, lahat ng mga Pilipino, may itim. O oh, again, yeah, that's a sweeping statement. Where did you base that statement? So again, please be careful ha, in, 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 in presenting literatures. No? Kung hindi ka sigurado, huwag mong ilalagay, lalo na kung wala kang basihan. Okay? Don't put anything in there that is not supported by literature because you might be questioned. And then, ano naman itong mga jargons? Mga jargons, ito yung mga expressions that are commonly reflected to a particular group no? or a particular... Yung mga terminologies nila, alibawa, yung mga sa medical field, no? yung mga medical jargons nila, alibawa. I don't know if you hear the medical people, medical persons na yung sinasabi, ay toxic ha? What do you mean by toxic for those who are, I don't know, if you happen to hear yung ibang mga ano, nasa, ano, nabawa, mga nurse, kumisan narinig ko sa, ay toxic, toxic ngayon. Kumisan, I don't know, yung ibig sabihin pala ng toxic, eh, nakakapagod. Again, that's a jargon. So the language that was, or the, the, the term that was used is toxic, no? Pero, ano yung toxic, no? Kung ordinary tao ka, ano yung toxic na yun? Ano ba yun? Uh, lason ba yun? Pero ngayon pala, sa terminology nila, eh, nakakapagod. Sir, PJ. So see, o kaya kung minsan naman yung, yes po. Uh, sir, uh, can you stop sharing and then share, share it again? Para matanggal yung lata ng bata. Thank okay po. Ah, okay. okay. Sorry for that. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. This na uh, remove na. So did you get the you know, the sweeping statements and jargon? So this is a no-no in literature review, especially pag wala silang basihan. Okay? Okay, so yung mga generalizations, kapag nag-generalize ka, okay, na walang cited source, mayayari ka. Kasi ibig sabihin, you are telling something that is not based on scientific findings. Okay po, so iwas-iwasan po natin yun. No? Lalo na yung mga, yung mga ganong mga statements, particularly in literature review. And then number seven, in any literature review, ito ko si kumisa yun na 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 ano no na nakakalimutan. When we present the literature review, we need to present the research gap based on the literature. So what is this research gap? So this research gap is the uh, reason why you're conducting the study. So ibig sabihin after exhausting all the efforts of of, uh, of presenting the literature and ito yung sinabi ng literature, ito yung blind spot, ito yung blank spot, ibig sabihin ng blind spot, ito yung pinag-aralan pero ito yung limitation, ito yung blank spot, ibig sabihin wala pang na, 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 pinag-aralan dito sa area na to. Ito ngayon yung magiging basis ng aming study. So ibig sabihin, ganun po kahalaga yung literature review, hindi lang po yan uh, nilalagay lang dyan. Kasi sometimes there is that impression to some researchers, ay, literature review is not important because ano lang yan, we're just reviewing certain old studies or previous studies, basta i-copy-paste mo na lang o kaya lagay mo na lang dyan. Hindi napapansin niyan yan. Pero guys, mind you, the literature review is your backbone actually in your study. No? It's very helpful for you to defend the reason, the significance of your study. Kung baga, ito yung magiging basis mo, sasabihin mo sa mga panel mo, for example, this is what the literature says. Ito yung hindi pa napapag-aralan. Ito, pa yung, ito na yung napag-aralan pero kulang pa. So ito po ngayon yung pag-aaralan namin. 
Okay. So, para siya yung magiging direction mo rin in conducting your study in particular. So, guys, a good literature review has the synthesis. A good literature review presents the research gap. Hindi lang nilagay ang literature review just for the sake na nilagay, but rather the purpose of the literature review is to guide the researcher in the direction of the study. That is why, kailangan po when we present the literature do sa latter part, magsisynthesize ka ngayon. Na itong mga nangyari or sinabi ng ibang mga old, ng mga references na books, journals, or and other references, ito ang existing um, story behind this kind of uh, study or topic. That is why ito yung magiging area of inquiry namin. Ito yung kulang. Okay po? So, again, these are my references. But um, but for the sake of time then, I'll be showing one sample. Okay? So, syempre, uh, mas maganda ipakita kung paano ginagawa yung isang literature review. Uh, I'll be showing to you, let me stop share screen. Uh, one article that we published so para makita nyo lang kung paano namin pinakita or ginawa yung literature review. So let me share screen yung aming ginawang, lit, uh, ginawang published article. Actually, this uh, published article is entitled ayan, nakikita po ba? Or nalakihan ko. Yan. Do you see it, guys? Readable naman po siya, sir. Or, ayan. Readable, okay. So, this article actually is a, is a qualitative study. A mix, actually, it's a mixed method study pala, sorry. So, this is a study on the health and hygiene needs, strategies, and well-being of an Aita indigenous community in the Philippines to photo voice methods. So, this is a, a work between Kotong Ne University and Holy Angel University where uh, where we conducted um, the mixed methodology study. So, isa ako sa mga co-authors, if you see, how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, apat na Filipino at dalawang Koreans. So, this was funded by the Korean uh, International Cooperation Agency. Actually, we conducted this for almost, I think, almost two years or one year. Medyo mahaba-haba kasi yung scope ng study na to. So if we will see this article, um, this is the abstract, and then we have the keywords. Uh, this is the literature review that we did. So for example, we mentioned of long talk. So see, tonight namin kasi we lifted it directly from from the United Nations, cited in long talk 2010. Itong page 4, makikita siya kay Lontok. So, we are claiming that this is not ours, but we are saying that this is from Lon from the United Nations, recited or cited in Lontok 2020. So, nakikita niyo po ba yan? So, we are, actually, yung literature review, nandito pa lang talaga. So, what we did in the literature review, para mas madali siya, Ang ginawa naming technique is thematization of the literature. So we pointed out yung mga certain concepts na magkakasama, ano yung sinasabi ng literature. So for example, we mentioned yung situation nila, no? kung ilan na yung mga indigenous peoples in the Philippines as we cite this particular author. And then, may, may, may mga pag-aaral na ba tungkol sa mga ay ayeta. So again, we mentioned yung yung si David 2011 and then another um, substrata of the literature is barriers and strategies for meeting basic needs. Again, we reviewed the literature. Nakita nyo to? Citation-wise, sa dami nila. So, ibig sabihin nito, guys, how many literature did we cite here? Anybody? Can you guess how many? Or how many? How many po? Di ba, itong, itong literature na to? So, see, several studies. Ha? We mentioned several studies. Ah, how many? 
So we mentioned several. So sabihin hindi lang ito isa. How many? One. Or two. Fourteen. Fourteen, are you sure? Abi ni lang yung ano author pero guys this is just three cited literature or studies one kasi paano natin magkikita na literature isang literature yon kapag may year lalo na sa APA di ba bisabihan kapag the author surname followed by the year that is already citing a particular literature so in this case for example yun. Balila et al. 2014. One. McDonald, Bailey, Race and Webster. 2009. Two. And then Walker et al. 2014. Three. So hindi po ibig sabihin na 14 studies siya. No. There are only three. But these studies are co-authored researches. So see, Pinagsama-sama namin yung idea nila or meron silang common idea na sinasabi and we put it into our own words and we cited them. So nakita nyo yun? Tatlo. Pero ito yung idea nila about it. And then nakita nyo several studies. So you mentioned. Another one, ito naman, usually ginagamit dito no, uh, yung as stated or as cited. But again, uh, sabi, ng, sabi nga natin last time doon sa previous uh, webinar, mas maganda na we attribute the work, not the author. Okay, mas, mag mas maganda yun. Pero sa, in some cases, we use or we attribute the author. May mga instances din. Pero in most cases, in scientific writings, we attribute the work not the author. Kaya nga, alimbawa, in Galliagard, 2006, so kaya parenthetical citation, Galliagard, 2006, something like that. So, yun po yung ginagawa. Itong example na to, yung alimbawa itong statement na to, or literature na to, this is a parenthetical citation. So, it means to say, this idea is not ours, but the the what do you call this the idea of Galliagard. So, but mis sa mas maganda na merong kaparang coherence in terms of presenting the literature by coming up with themes. Kasi mas madali mo silang balikan later in your analysis. Tignan yun to. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina na gap presenting the gap. Therefore, the photo voice method was used in the study to aim the risk of the research by working collaboratively with the Philippine Ita community to understand their perception on their hygiene and health environment and pursue responses to these issues. So, ito yung parang actual introduction na ng, ano, ng, uh, dito, ng statement of the problem or research questions. Kasi sa journal na to, incorporated kasi yung SOP sa literature review at saka sa introduction. So, para mag ito yung naglilink ngayon. Pagkatapos namin nireview yan, ito yung sinasabi ng study. Okay po? I will show you another example which was also published. Uh, let me start. Uh, this study naman was published in 2018. This is also a co-authored study. So, I will show to you yung na-publish na article na yon. para magka-idea tayo paano ginagawa yung literature review. Okay, so this one was published in 2018. Again, this is a co-authored work. Ano naman kami dito? Anin. Okay, so we try to study the Filipino college students' attitude towards religion. 
So what we did is yun nga, uh, we made, sa introduction pa lang, tingnan ninyo, napaka, napaka anda ng literature review. Okay, so we are citing certain articles, but, and then yung et al. By the way, when we use the term et al, okay, in literature, ibig sabihin niyan, uh, in APA ngayon, kahit tatlo pa lang, in the first citation, you can already use et al. So et al, is, mabawa, the surname is Sarmiento et al. Et al, may, may space siya, al, dun yung period. Hindi yung period after the et. Hindi po yun. So, et space al period, kama the year of uh, publication. Sir, bakit kung minsan may mga letters? Sa mga literature, mabawa, barring, eh, at kagayan, barring et al 2016a. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Meron po bang B? Posible. Ibig sabihin nun, parehong authors or parehong author na publish ng parehong year. Kasi kung minsan mahirapan ka, saan ba bang, saan bang ang galing yun? Saan bang publication niya? So para mas madali siyang makita, no? ibig sabihin, kapag may A and B, kahit parehong year, hindi siya pareho ng publication or ng work. So let me show you that. No? Ayun, no? kung may A, may B. So pakita po natin. Doon sa reference list para makita lang natin. So tignan nyo. Um, this was published in 2016. Ayun, A. And 2016B. Lalong-lalo na kung pareho ang first author. Okay? So syempre siya yung unang lilitaw. Usually, the first author is the lead author of that publication or of that work. Kaya, dapat ilagay nyo yung letter. Accepted yan sa APA. Okay? So, if you happen to see it as well in the literature review, gumawa rin din kami ng parang ano, ng, ng the need. Okay? The need for the measure. Ibig sabihin ito yung reason. Bakit? So, see? Uh, this is a form of literature na para bang uh, we are trying to mention the very reason why there is a need to come up with a new measure. So, continue siya na ganun. Okay? So, I think uh, that would be my presentation for today. So, maraming salamat. So, if we have questions, we can now raise their, their, your questions for this presentation so that we can enrich each other's knowledge. So, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sir PJ, for that informative uh, presentation. Dr. PJ is now open for your question. You can now type your question at the chat box. So, you can now take for a possible question you can ask Sir Philip. So you can just type it on the chop, chat box. Yeah, is it is it na question na pwede natin itanong regarding the topic? So itype lang natin sa chat box. Anyone? Lalo na sa issue ng plagiarism, you can ask. Yeah. Any clarifications? Or anyone? Sir, masyado yata maganda yung pagkaka-explain mo. <laughs> Wala yata silang question. <laughs> anyway, you can ask hey. us your question. Okay? Tinatamad... Sabi daw nila dalawang bagay. Kung, kung pwede rin ano, uh, magtanong sila directly, i-open yung, i-mag-unmute sila in case yeah. uh, na silang time to put it sa chat box. Po. Thank you po. Anyone? Or nahihiya sila, sir? <laughs> Ayan, I think there is one question, sir. Ay, ma'am. Wala po yata. Ah, the latter part, ma'am. Ah, direct message to me pala sa akin, sorry. Direct message. Ah, uh, sabi niya, sir, may I ask po if Meron na po bang plagiarism check? 
na na-invent. Yes, meron po. There is already, or there are many ways to check plagiarized works. Uh, one example is play plug scan. Uh, and then one example is turn it in. Uh, that is a university, sa Holy Angel, we use plug scan and then later on we, we change to turn it in. Anong ginagawa doon sa plug scan? Usually, yun nga, from the term itself, scan, they will scan the document and then ipapakita niya sa iyo yung, yung similarity index ng mga sinulat mo. Ibig sabihin, if it's not originally you, lalong-lalo na kung nanggaling yan sa internet, ma-identify niya saan mo kinuha. Okay? Sasabihin niya, you, you, you got this from a particular source in this link, something like that. So, uh, na, na ano po yun, nadidetect. However, syempre, meron mga acceptance rate kasi. Depende sa institutions. No? Sometimes, other institutions would re require 5% acceptance rate or 10% acceptance rate. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Uh, that, that is the tolerance level. Ibig sabihin, Kapag 5% lang yung plagiarized work, ibig sabihin nun, yun kasi, uh, tawag doon, hindi mo maiwasan kung minsan, halimbawa, yung term na to, talagang common siya. Okay, kumbaga, kahit anong gawin mo, lilitaw at lilitaw yun, kasi talagang common term siya. For example, halimbawa, pangalan siya ng isang institution. Siyempre, pag minimension mo siya doon, sigurado may website yan, lilitaw at lilitaw yan sa, sa scan. So, Kung minsan, tinitignan din nila, din double check din. Uh, meron din kasing yung tinatawag na gross scanning, yung sabihin yung kabuan, and then yung net scan. So, gross and net. Kapag nag-net nag scan na, ibig sabihin, nung inalis na yung mga possible na mga ano pwede namang i-disregard, kasi na common naman sila, dun pa lang talaga makikita yung acceptability. So, I think sa University, Dr. Richard, sa atin, we accept 10% right in Holy Angel. But, in other institutions, 15%, pero depende. Pero again, uh, what matters most in the scan is nakikita kung original ba or hindi. O kaya naman, you cited the work, but you did not properly put quotation, lalo na kung direct quotation siya. O kaya kung misa naman, kinuha mo siya, hindi mo nilagyan ng citation. So, yun po kung minsan na, na, na scan yan. Lalo na, may mga databases na kasi tayo sa mga journals, sa mga libro, may mga e-books na po tayo. So, easily, kapag kinopya natin yan directly, sigurado lilitaw yan sa scan. Okay, so, please be careful as well. No? Sir, there is a question here. Do double or multiple publication are from our form of plagiarism from Sir Randolph? I definitely definitely they are. <laughs> definitely they are. So, ito naman nangyayari usually sa mga journal publications. Uh example, no, halimbawa, you already published this and then you try to submit it to the other journal. E eh, pareho na accept. And then, pareho na published. Did you commit double, plagi uh, double publication? Yes. Uh, pero kung minsan kasi, nadidetect din yan later on. Pero na kung alam na instance na nangyaring ganyan. Na-accept siya sa ganitong journal, and then nag-present siya sa isang conference, yung the same content, hiningi yung journal for publication, binigay niya, and then later on, pinablish, na hindi, hindi alam ng author. So, anong nangyari? Naging dalawa ngayon yung publication. And then later on, nakita yon Na-detect kasi parehong-pareho yung title, parehong-pareho yung abstract, parehong-pareho yung, yung, ano, yung laman. Na-detect siya by scanning. O kaya naman, may mga instance din, instance din na pwede mangyari to, yung pinaraphrase lang, pero yun din. Actually, there is what we call salami slicing, no? In publications, lalo na yung na happy-happy nila, pero the same word. Pero according to APA, kanina nabasa ko yon there are certain exemptions. Pero kailangan mo lang siyang in-note. For example, thesis or dissertation, can we publish it? Can we publish it? 
Okay? Oh, uh, can we can we publish it? Ano? Can we publish it by piece? Pwede. However, you need to cite in the the note section do sa baba that this part or this publication is part and parcel of your dissertation. So, pwede po yun. Kasi usually naman ang thesis or dissertation are unpublished materials. Pero you need to recognize that this paper is part of this whole body of work. Exemption po yun. Pero yung halimbawa, sa... sa, sa, sa sa, sa kapampangan kasi nga, o sa nagalit ng lang, pipali-pali, or para bang init-init mo lang, nilagyan mo lang ng ibang angulo, pero same lang yung result, that is also plagiarism. And sometimes, sa pag-pinablish mo yan, that's also considered to be double publication. Yes, Dr. Richard, uh, you're saying something po. Uh, opo, hello po. Uh, gusto ko lang pong mag-add dun sa na, dun, uh, dear students, dun sa napanggit ni Dr. PJ about uh, plagiarism scanning. Uh, oo, tama yun. Uh, ang mga plagiarism uh, scan natin, um, mayroon sa mga universities. Uh, pero usually may ano yun, no? may bayad yun. Uh, kasi ang mga plug scan natin na ganoon, usually binibili yan ng mga universities. Now, para sa inyong mga estudyante, lalo na sa mga uh, kasamahan natin, uh, sa mga students natin na nag-aaral sa Uh, public schools o kaya kung hindi man sa public school sa private school pero uh, kapos sa budget paano nyo, mak makakapag-plug scan pa rin ba kayo? Yes, marami naman tayong mga online free uh, plagiarism na scan na software uh, merong nililimit lang yung words na kaya mong scan halimbawa hanggang 1,000 lang, hanggang 2,000 pero pwede, pwede na yung mga yon mayroon din namang ano, yung uh, mga trial version na tinatawag nila Halimbawa, kung ang trial version na, na, na niya ay good for 30 days lang, ang style dyan, pag malapit ka ng mag-pass, dun mo, dun mo gamitin yung trial version. Huwag yung kakasimula pa lang ng research mo, ginamit mo na yung trial version, syempre matatapos na yung 30 days, wala ka nang magagamit. So napakaganda rin na kayong mga estudyante, masanay kayo sa ganoon yung mga, meron tayong mga online na plug scan, plagiarism scanning, para kayo mismo na-check nyo kung... Uh, kung uh, ilang percent na ba yung plagiarize sa trabaho nyo at ilang percent na ba yung uh, authentic. Yung binabanggit kanina ni Dr. PJ na, na sinasabi niyang uh, uh, plagiarism scan rate. Ano yun, yun? Alibaba, kung pag sinabing 10%, ang allowed lang ng university o kaya ang allowed lang ng school ninyo, kapag sinek ang buong trabaho mo, dapat 10% lang yung plug scan. Pinapakita ng uh, plug scan yun. Sasabihin niya sa'yo, the plug scan rate, yung hindi authentic sa trabaho mo ay 10%. At ang authentic naman, ibig sabihin, galing sa'yo na paraphrase mo ng maayos ay 90%. So pasok ka ganon, ligtas ka sa ganon. Although delikado pa rin yun kasi 10%. Uh, at least, nandun ka, usually, uh, nandun ka lang sana sa mga 7, pababa, ganoon. Pero kung sinabi niyang 10, 10 ang lumabas sa plug scan rate mo, safe ka noon. Kaya Uh, kayo mismo, uh, dear students, kayo mismo merong paraan para hindi na makarating sa teacher, hindi na makarating sa professor ninyo. Yung trabaho nyo na i-correct ka pa niya, dami mong uh, uh, i-re-read pa niya lahat yan. So kung, kung ikaw mismo meron kang paraan para ma-check yung trabaho mo bago makarating sa mga, sa mga professors ninyo. Although, uh, another, ito another input ito no, regarding plagiarism scan pa rin. Kung minsan nagtataka ka, uh, Original naman yung ginamit ko, salita ko naman nito, pinaraphrase ko naman, pero bakit ni re red pa rin siya ng uh, plagiarism scanning, ng plug scan na ginamit mo, na tipong feeling mo, pasok ka na dapat sa 10%, pero nag-11% pa rin siya. So, binalik sa yung paper mo, pinaparevise, kasi nga, uh, 10 lang ang allowed, pero 11. Uh, ganito na lang ang isipin mo. Ka, parang yung sinabi kanina ni Doc PJ na nireiterate niya rin yung sinabi, ni, uh, sinabi ko sa kanya na, Uh, mas matalino tayo sa mga software, mas matalino tayo sa mga technology. Siyempre, hindi naman perfecto yan, hindi sila 100% na uh, minsan nga yung uh, uh, plagiarize mong trabaho, baka hindi niya mascan. At yung original mong trabaho, yun yung mascan niya na plagiarize. So, pero ano naman yon hindi ko naman sinasabi na malaking percentage yun. Ang sinasabi ko lang dito, hindi sila perfecto, kaya nga uh, napakahalaga na, na napaka-careful natin sa sa trabaho natin. So, yun lamang po. Thank you po, uh, Dr. PJ Mamari. 
Okay po. Uh, I think there is one question directed to me, uh, the direct message, so uh, siguro I can read. Uh, sir, what if yung information po is galing sa isang source na kinuha lang din sa ibang research or source? Isasay po ba yung pinagkuhanan ng info or yung pinakamay-ari po? Actually, yung sinasabi mo siguro yung as cited in. No? Halimbawa, uh, the original author is uh, Dr. Sanchez. Halimbawa, he published a work in 2018. So, and then gagamitin ko siya. Or I cited the idea of Dr. Sanchez. For example, Dr. Sanchez mentioned about uh, evaluating programs in uh, in uh, senior high school pro senior high school department. So, and then I'm also studying that. And then mention ko siya. So, in, in Sanchez 2018, Okay. Uh, bawa, program evaluation on this on on senior high school program is a must. So sinabi niya yon. Pero sinait ko yon. Now si Ma'am Alisa, nanonood siya pili do. Ma'am Alisa. Ma'am Alisa. Tuazon. Ang Tuazon, yeah. Si Ma'am Tuazon magpa-publish siya ngayon. So ako pinaglish ko yon 2019. Did you get it? Ngayon si Ma'am Tuason, magsusulat siya ngayon tungkol sa same topic. E gusto niyang isay originally yung kay Dr. Sanchez. Pero wala siyang uh, specific on a way to locate the original work of Dr. Sanchez. Pero nabasa niya sa akin kasi sa akin, for example, open access siya. So, isasay ko ba si Dr. Sanchez? Or isasay ba ni Ma'am Tuason si Dr. Sanchez? Yes. Mauuna siya. So Sanchez 2018 as cited in Sarmiento 2019 mentioned that or explained. So ibig sabihin, sinight ko yung idea ni Dr. Sanchez na ngayon ay pinipresent ni Ma'am Tuason in, in the writing. So therefore, kailangan mong isight kung saan yung original. Pero, pero ang mas maganda talaga, if you can have the direct access to the original work, mas maganda. Pero kasi may mga instance lang din na, alamawa, paid yung journal, hindi talaga ma-access, pero may nakita kang open access at sinight niya yung work na yon na gusto mong i-adapt, pwede naman yun. Kaya lang, isasight mo. Now, sino yung lilitaw sa reference list? I think we discussed ko din to last time, no? Yung lilitaw ay sino? Ang lilitaw na doon ay ako. Yung, ako yung nag-cite kay Dr. Sanchez. So, ibig sabihin, ikaw mismo, hindi mo nakita yung work ni Dr. Sanchez at binasi mo lang yung, 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 yung idea ni Dr. Sanchez sa paano ko siya binasa or paano ko siya kinuha. That is why, ang ilalagay mo noon na reference list sa baba is my work. Not Dr. Sanchez. Pero mas maganda, again guys, mas maganda kunin yung mismong material kung may access. Okay, basta isight nyo kung sino yung tunay na may-ari. No? Again, those are certain issues. Okay, thank you. Sir, meron pa pong isa dito na PM. If I write somebody, yes. uh, something somebody else already wrote, but I didn't know they wrote it, is that still plagiarism? What are the punishments? Actually kasi kapag may nauna na, siya na talaga yung nauna. Ayan, para bang first love never dies. Ganyan po kasi yung ano. Kahit na ngayon po palang naisip at may nauna nang nakaisip at na-claim na niya yun, how can the person claim it? Na-publish na, na, na niya yun o kaya na-present niya na yun, uh, eh, you cannot claim it anymore. Ito, applicable ito sa mga tinatawag natin, ano, if you know, happen to know that, sa mga inventions, yung tinatawag nilang patents. Do you know patents? Halimbawa, ano, I'll give you an example. Di ba ngayon nauso yung mga face shields? Ginagamit natin ngayon sa pandemic, yung mga plastic-plastic na yan. So, yung unang nag-invent niyan, siya yung, ano, may patent doon. Sabihin siya yung unang nakaisip noon. 
So kung sino man ang gagamit ng idea niya na yon kailangan siyang bayaran. Bakit? Kasi siya yung unang nakaisip. What if sir, mag, ano sila, magdi-divide sila ng, magdi-divide sila ng konti. Kailangan pa rin ba nilang i-coordinate yun dun sa, sa unang naka, nakaisip? Kailangan. Kasi i-adapt pa rin nila yung structure eh. So parang ganyan din sa, sa literature. Kung sino yung una na nakapag-publish, siya yung unang pwede mag-claim. Okay, so kaya nga pinapublish. Kaya nga kung minsan nakakalungkot, nauna mo na palang inisip pero hindi mo siya pinresent, hindi mo siya sinulat, you cannot claim it as your own. So first love never dies. Kung uh, sino yung una. So unahan yan sa idea. And what are the punishments though, sir, for the plagiarism? Kasi sir, hindi mo naman daw po alam na someone wrote it. Is there any punishment daw po? Uh, siguro, uh, uh, ano yung punishment? Ano yung context ng punishment? Sa school setting ba yan? O madidemanda ba? Depende kasi kung anong sitwasyon. No? Again, kapag sa school setting, syempre, you will be reprimanded. Parang plagiarism kasi yan, no? In terms of legal matters naman, halimbawa, yung sinasabi ko nga ang patent, pwede kang kasuhan. Pag hindi mo, nire- hindi, hindi, ka na, hindi mo yan acknowledge na parang mang kiniklaim mo na original ka, pero may nauna na. Sir, may so, I, may so, may I clarify yung question? Yes, yes, Doc. May I clarify yung question yes, nung, nung bata? Ang pinapoint yata nung nagtatanong, uh, what if hindi talaga niya alam na uh, merong may-ari nung idea na yon? at uh, ginamit niya. Ano yung mapaparusahan ba siya? Kumbaga ano to, it's a uh, uh, within good faith, hindi niya alam na mayroong nagmamay-ari at ginamit Meron niya. Oh, oh. Oo, oh. yun po yung context uh, ng tanong. In good faith, alam niya na uh, in, in good faith, alam niya na sa kanya, in good faith, alam niya na ay hindi niya alam na may nagmamay-ari. So may parusa ba siya? Regardless sa kung ano mang context yan, kung sa school man siya. Pero hindi talaga niya alam. So mapaparusahan ba siya? I think hindi naman. Pero syempre, hindi mo na makiklaim no. Hindi ka na pwedeng magklaim kasi may nauna na. So, uh, depende ka din kasi kung paano mo ginamit yung idea. Eh, no? Or yun nga, kahit hindi honest to goodness, hindi mo alam na may nauna na. Siguro kaya nga doon din pumapasok yung plagiarism checking, no? Kasi nga, doon makikita na may nauna na palang gumamit. Though, ikaw, unintentionally, you did not do it na for the sake na i-claim mo. So ngayon, kung nalaman mo na may nauna na, so therefore, if you want to push through using that idea, you need to cite properly na kung sino yung una lang nauna. Doon sa pag-aaral. Siguro po, uh, doon din po pumapasok so, yung ano, ah, uh, maging careful ka talaga sa pagtatrabaho mo ng mga related literature and studies mo or the manuscript uh, as a whole, as, a, as an entire, uh, as an entirety na maging careful ka talaga kasi nga, uh, parang ano lang yan, kung sa batas, di ba sabi nila sa batas, ignorance of the law excuses no one. Hindi pwedeng uh, kapag dumaan ka doon sa isang lugar na bawal pala yung dumaan doon, sasabihin mo na hindi mo alam ang batas, hindi mo alam ang uh, policy. Kasi napaka-dangerous din nung ano, napaka-dangerous din nung uh, although yung tinatawag nilang good faith, in good faith, hindi ko naman alam na may nagmamay-ari pala doon. Usually yun ang ginagamit na defense eh. In good faith, hindi ko naman alam na meron palang uh, nagmamay-ari na sa kanya. Uh, kaya nga, doon pumapasok yung investigation, doon pumapasok yung pagiging... Uh, pagiging uh, pagiging uh, careful natin lalo na sa mga related uh, literature and uh, studies. If I may add lang po, uh, dati po meron po akong pinapanood na palabas sa GMA7 si si Ding Dong Dantes kasama niya si Miss Maricel Soriano at si uh, Lobby po. Ang pamagat po nito ay dunat ng mga bata pa kasi kayo ang pamagat niya. Pero sa GMA po siya, series po siya, telenovela. Ang dalawang Mrs. Real. Kaya siya, kaya ganoon po yung ano niya, kaya ganoon po yung uh, pamagat niya. Kasi dalawa silang Mrs. Real. Uh, although ang uh, talagang asawa ay si Miss Maricel Soriano. Alam mo naman, ang, uh, ang karakter ng isang Maricel Soriano, matara yun. Tapos, uh, engineer itong lalaki, nagpunta sa isang lugar. Tapos sa uh, Uh, may uh, mga situation na may mga nangyari and then uh, naging uh, uh, nabuntis itong si Lobby po 
And then, uh, sinabi niya na kailangan siyang pakasalan ng lalaki. Although yung lalaki, he was trying to say na married siya, pero, uh, pero may mga pangyayari na hindi, 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 hindi niya nasabi yon So, kaya nagkaroon ng dalawang ganon. So, nung confrontation nung dalawang ano, nung dalawang Mrs. Real, ang sabi ni Miss Maricel Soriano, na I think na post ko rin yata ito sa Edcor, Uh, sabi niya, kasi si Miss Maricel, ano siya doon, uh, teacher siya doon. Sabi niya, uh, teacher kasi ako, sa, ka, mag-uusap sila nung second, ano, second uh, Mrs. Real. Sabi niya, uh, teacher kasi ako, so tuturuan kitang mag-research, sabi niya doon kayo lobby po. Uh, uh, medyo sensitive ang word pero for purposes of discussion lang, pasensya na kayo. Uh, bago, mo, bago mo gawin ng ganitong bagay, bago, bago ka pumatol sa asawa ng kung may asawa. Although yung ginagamit ng term ngayon, medyo ano na, no? medyo uh, in-screen ko na iba yung mga terms na ginamit. Panoorin nyo na lang for yourself. Sabi niya, bago mo gawin ito, kailangan mag-research ka muna. Kasi mahirap i-defense yung hindi mo alam. Mahirap i-defense yung uh, uh, hindi mo alam, kaya mo nagawa. Kaya nga napakahalaga ng pag-iingat. Kayo, kahit mga grade 11, grade 12 students pa lang kayo, you really have to be uh, very careful sa sa ganitong mga sa ganitong mga bagay lalo na when it comes to the properties ideas of uh, other people madaling sabihin na hindi alam eh pero paano mong papatunayan yon di ba paano mong haharapin ang professor mo na hindi ko alam na may nagmamay-ari pala okay po so yun lang po thank you so much po siguro if i may add doc recharge ito yung mga sweeping state yung mga sweeping statements na sinasabi ko kanina yung generalizations na kung minsan, feeling natin tayo yung una nagsalita pero meron na palang nagsabi niya. So, be careful. Ah, yes ma'am, may question pa po. Wala na po yata, sir. Meron pa po ba? Uh, there is another question, direct message sa akin. So, sabi niya. Bakit kaya nag-direct message po sila, is, no? What advice? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hindi nila... Napansin ko lang, no? Napansin nila, ko sa mga audience natin. Question. Sabi nila, sir, uh, anong question po is what advice po may bibigay niyo for people na naghahanap pa lang po ng topic or research title? Yun po kasi ang nakikita kong pinaka mahirap. That's the purpose of literature review. Okay, kaya nagre-literature review ka kasi doon mo makikita yung topic mo. Kasi ibig sabihin, ito yung hindi pa na-research sa field, ito, ito pa yung hindi pa na pag-uusapan. So, pwede mong i-explore yun. Again, pag sinabi natin, ah, siguro panoorin po ninyo yung recorded ng EPCOR week 5 and 6, no, Dr. Richard? Okay, Nandun, okay. in-explain ko doon ano yung importansya ng literature review and how will it help you develop your your problem. Kasi, dapat may topic ka pa lang or idea ka pa lang. At after doon sa topic na yun, doon mo titinan yung mga existing literature. And from the existing literature, ito po yung sinasabi ko kanina, tingnan mo yung gap ano yung kulang? Ano yung hindi pa in-explore? Yun yung mag-lead sa'yo sa pag-aaral na pwede mong gawin or sa title or research title na pwede mong gawin. Uh, nakakalungkot po, no? Sorry to say. Uh, kung minsan, mas nauuna yung title kaysa sa, 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 sa literature review. However, the proper, proper way po talaga dapat is may topic ka muna, ibig sabihin, medyo broad pa yan, And then do the literature review before you zoom in with your particular research question or particular title. Kasi um, yun yung purpose ng literature review, hindi yung title muna bago literature review. So kung minsan, yan ang nagiging problema ng ibang researchers. Uunahin yung title bago sila magbasa. Basahin mo muna ano yung existing, ano yung gap, ano yung problema, ano yung context. And then from there, doon mo i-propose yung title mo or yung question, research question na gusto mo uh, investigate or yung problem na gusto mo tignan in your style. Meron pa po bang question? Ipo? Uh, wala nang DM sa akin. <laughs> Kasi I think ito talaga yung isa sa mga minsan neglect, niniligleg yung RRL no. Tilim kasi ng iba, maglalagay ka lang okay na yan. At kung minsan, I don't know Dr. Richard can also attest to this. Yung iba kasi mga researchers, 
Akala ng iba na hindi binabasa ng mga panel members. Ay, kasi ano lang yan, literature lang. Pero may mga ano rin na binabasa talaga yan. As for my experience sa dissertation ko, talagang may isang oh, ano ako, uh, uh, panel member ako, talagang tinitignan niya yung, even yung authority dun sa field na yun. Kasabihin pa sa akin, bakit hindi mo sinight si ganito? Bakit hindi mo binasa yung libro ni ganito? Kasi yung mismo panel member, alam niya yung authority dun sa area na yun. So sometimes may mga certain works kasi na kailangan isight kasi part and parcel sila ng theory building ng study mo. Okay? Uh, Kung baga, ito yung authority doon. Talagang naalala ko siya. Talagang sinasabi sa akin. Basahin mo to, Kasi hindi mo sinama sa literature review mo. Tingnan mo itong pag-aaral ni ganito. So, again, may mga ganyan pong mga panel members na talagang knowledgeable sila sa mga existing literatures na kailangan. But again, Uh, sa panahon ng pandemic, one challenge that we have, as I have said in the previous webinar, eh, paano natin i-access yung mga journals or yung mga literature na yun, lalo na hindi tayo makapunta sa library. So those, that, those are things that we, that we are limited to. But again, may mga open access naman. So siguro, sa like and subscribe at core YouTube channel, panoorin nyo yung yung weeks 5 to 6, I explain to that sa inyong kukunin, titignan yung mga possible, uh, lalo na sa mga hindi na, na naka-attend last time, panoorin nyo yun, nandun yung mga possible uh, resources or, or databases that you can uh, use to search for literature, lalo na yung mga open access journals. So magagamit nyo sir. Sir, may follow-up question dito. Ang nakalagay? Yes po. Is it still plagiarism, sir, if you have copied the title but changed the address? Maybe, add, add, maybe sir, yung gustong ipaano niya dito, yung address, maybe same yung title nila, pero different siguro yung maybe uh, in Jollibee, tapos yung sa kanya in McDonald's, siguro ganun yung gusto niya ipahiwatig sa address. Uh, may ethical issue din doon kasi you're using the same idea. Kasi um, ano rin yun. Pero mag-iiba lang yun talaga kung talagang iba yung situation. Pero again, let's be careful in dropping names then in terms of titles. Kaya nga kung minsan, we are not quoting directly kung ano yung specific uh, name ng lugar, ng isang skwelahan, or ng isang tao. Kasi it may, it may have this what we call parang stigmatis, uh, dito, a stigmatization. No? Yung stigmatization sa isang tao. Pero ang ganyan yung sinasabi mo kasi is para bang siguro ganito yan, no? Uh, that dependence in ang city and their, and, their, and their academic profile. And then papalitan mo siya. That dependence in in Quezon City and their academic profile. Uh, plagiarism po ba yun? Depende sa content. Kung talagang pati yung idea paano ginawa and then hindi mo naman siya sinay it may possibly be plagiarism. Pero kapag sinight mo na may isang pag-aaral na, na, na kinondak sa Angela City na ganito, na ginamit yung the same design, hindi ka ano ka, umaga, you're recognizing that your work is somehow a replication of that study, but you're not saying na, okay, yung ginagawa mo is an original one. So sinasight mo pa rin na seemingly ito pareho ito. So yung ginagawa kong process. Okay, so sometimes we also oh, we also do that. No, may mga rep. Hindi mo talaga tawo nila mga replication studies, Dr. Richard. No, if I may, dalo na yung mga procedural studies na pwede siyang replicate in a manner na pareho yung situation. Pero kailangan mong isight yung mga previous uh, ginawa na to in the previous or lalo na kung published yung mga. Sir, meron pa po dito from Sir Randolph. Pwede po ba na when cited yes, na pag-alaman na plagiarize, gawa nung sinight na literature or study, may nakakalusot pa rin po ba sa publication? When cited? Uh, sometimes kasi, syempre, no, kung minsan may mga lapses din yung mga publications. Uh, syempre, tao ang nagmamanage niyan. 
And sometimes, meron din mga instances na may mga nakakalusot ng materials na ganyan. Pero, uh, kaya nga dito natin dapat tignan din yung credibility ng journal. Yan, another, another topic yung Dr. Doc Richard, the possible, no? Yung how to see predatory journals. Kasi may mga journals din kasi na, I don't know if you have, ito medyo lumalayo na tayo sa discussion natin, no? Yung, ano siya, uh, mga predatory, ibig sabihin, parang pinagkakapirahan lang or business model lang yung yung publication. Pero yung in terms of rigor, yung quality ng publication, kung minsan, even yung plagiarism, hindi na nila chinecheck. Just for the sake na makapag, makapag-publish sila, may ginagawang gano'n. Kaya nga nakakalungkot kung bisa, may mga nakakalusot. Kaya nga, again, dito yung role nung ano, yung talagang titignan mo yung indexation nung journal. Uh, again, this is very technical na para sa mga bata, no? sa research, yung Scopus Index ba yan? Uh, ISI ba yan? May cross-ref ba yan? Kasi yung mga yon are safeguards no? to check whether yung journal na to na nag-publish ng mga articles are really following strict and rigorous and scientific way of review and uh, checking no? bago, uh, bago yung publication. But again, uh, hindi totally kasi kung minsan may mga nakakalusok. Kasi ano yan? Uh, kaya nga maging mapanuri din sa mga literature na sinasahin. Kung may question pa po ba? May pahabol? Wala na po sa akin. Meron pa po ba? Ito, Richard. Meron pa pang... Wala na po. Addition. Wala na. With that po, uh, I would like to thank uh, Sir Philip Joseph for that informative and uh, informative uh, uh, Presentation. Thank you, Sir Joseph. So, if our students don't have any more questions, well, maybe we can have a short quiz for them to see if they learned something from our discussion. Sige po, pwede tayo mag um, short quiz for them. So, ito, madali lang. I will show you a the question. Then, you can just unmute your mic and answer it verbally. Uh, konti lang naman to mga seven items lang naman. Wala naman sigurong babagsak sa seven items quiz, no, sir? Philip, okay. Try natin if they learn yes, something po. from the presentation. Oh, sige po. Try natin. Asan yung share? Share. Yes, screen. Ay, 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 ay. ay. Lumilit ako, lumilit ako. <laughs> So this one. Okay, quiz natin. For our quiz, you can un you can just unmute your mic and say the answer, okay? For our first question, it is one of the major concerns in research ethics, especially in literature review. Anyone? This is just a review yeah, of our Lesson, yes? Plagiarism. Plagiarism, Acosta. Correct. Okay. One point for Acosta. Okay, plagiarism. Next one. Our second question. It is using vast content from elsewhere by just changing the language. If you use vast content. Paraphrasing. 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 Ano? Two points for Acosta. Acosta again. Two points for Acosta. For our next question, paraphrasing is the correct answer. For our next question, it is duplicating a publication or copying one's own published text or figures without citation or copyright agreement. A, word plagiarism, B, idea plagiarism, C, self-plagiarism, based on the presentation letter. of Sir Philip. Letter C. Letter C, I think. Le letter C. But but D1? But D1's answer is letter C. Let's see if his answer is correct. 
Okay, it's letter C. One, for, one point for you, Padiwan. Okay, for our next question, it includes unjustified or honorary auto authorship. A, ghost and guest writing. B, translation, plagiarism. C, sources, plagiarism. Anyone? A, ma'am. Letter A po. Letter A po. A po. Yes. 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 I think letter A also was no, no. in the Letter mm -hmm. A. Okay. The correct answer is letter ghost a. and guest writing. Oh, marami nagsagot. So, marami ang uyalaw dito, di ba? Oh, next question. It is copying content from the internet. A, verbatim. Si-cyber-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-tracing-t
practical research to qualitative research week seven, six to seven lessons. The lecturer is Dr. Adrian Lawrence P. Car Caruajal, uh, Dean of Institute of Graduate Studies of San Sebastian, San Sebastian College, Recolectos. And the moderator is Mark Joseph D. Santos from I Academy, Makati City, Philippines. Okay, hopefully, uh, next, uh, tomorrow, this is tomorrow. Tomorrow, makasama ulit namin kayo for our next webinar. I see something there oh, with prices, okay? Let's see if ano yung prices nila, di ba? Napaka-thrilling. So, hopefully, tomorrow, makasama namin ulit kayo sa webinar natin. So, with that, Sir uh, Dr. Ano, um, Dr. Richard? Yes, po. Any additional message or announcement? Ah, sige po. Uh, first po, uh, natutuwa ako na at, at the same time nagtataka rin. No? This is the first time sa mga series of webinars natin na yung mga participants na... Yeah, no, no, no. Na, it's not fully book eh, kasi this also happened na sa lecture ni uh, Doc Isai, if you can still remember. But uh, yung mga messages ng mga baka, parang nahiya sila to send sa sa public na nakikita ng lahat. Napansin ko, this is the first time na nagpa-personal message sila doon sa mga sa speaker or sa moderator. Uh, siguro medyo mahihayin ng audience natin ngayon na uh, they do not want to be uh, recognized na galing sa kanila yung tanong or baka gusto lang talaga nilang uh, more banding uh, closer doon sa tinatanong nila kaya sinesend nila personal. So uh, that is just my observation. And uh, another observation po, napansin ko na merong mga tanong na uh, hin pang ano pang ibang lesson. Kaya medyo nahihirapan din ang, uh, ang uh, speaker na in as much as gusto niyang explain lahat, uh, tayo ay uh, bound, uh, bounded lamang noong uh, uh, particular week. Halimbawa po ngayon, this is uh, quarter one, week six to seven na uh, lessons. So kaya nga po maganda yung suggestion kanina ni Dr. PJ. Uh, panoorin niyo po yung meron po tayong YouTube channel yung uh, Edcore din po ang pangalan niya Edcore Educational Research Center. Punta lang punta lang po kayo sa YouTube, i-type mo lang Edcore, automatic makikita mo po lahat ng mga lectures natin doon from week 1, week 2 kasi ang uh, webinar na ito para sa mga senior high school students ay naka ano po talaga sila naka per week. Uh, kaya po hindi kayo talaga maliligaw kung gusto mong pag-aralan pa yung, yung mga tanong kanina tungkol sa paano bang pag-develop ng title, paano bang pag-develop ng topic, na-discuss po lahat yan doon sa mga previous uh, webinars natin. So I am inviting you na panoorin po yung mga yon Definitely hindi po talaga kayo maliligaw. In fact po kahit yung mga kasamahan nating mga teachers dito, they can even use those videos as instructional materials in their classroom. Kompletong-kompleto na po ganyan po ang pinoprovide sa atin ng uh, at Core Educational Research Center. Kung minsan po mayroong nagpo-post dun sa page na nagtatanong sila ano yung gagawin sa ganito, yung gagawin sa ganyan, madalas po ang sinasagot ko sa kanila, panoorin po yung mga mga videos doon sa YouTube channel natin. Kasi everything is in there naman po, na-explain po ng maayos ng mga, ng mga speakers natin. And uh, finally po, I would like to thank the following, si uh, Dr. Fahab ng uh, Uh, Sultan Kudarat State University na nagbigay po sa atin ng uh, welcome remarks kanina on behalf of EDCOR. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Dr. Fahab. If you are uh, still here, thank you very much po. And uh, of course po, napakagaling din ang ating uh, moderator, si Ma'am Maria Alaysa Tuason. Uh, napakasigla po, no? talagang parang yung energy po ni Ma'am uh, Marami siyang nainom na Yakult sa energy niya ngayong uh, this is also the first time po na talagang uh, magagaling din naman po yung iba nating mga nakaraang mga moderators pero si Ma'am po talaga marami siyang nainom na ano ba yung pampalakas pampadagdag ng pero energy. Wala pang kain yan. Wala, ah, wala pa pong kain yun. <laughs> so yun po pala no may suggest ko sa mga susunod na moderators wag munang kumain para maging ganito kasigla ni Ma'am uh, Mary Alaysa Tuason. Maraming salamat po. And of course po ang isa sa mga ipinagmamalaking uh, research consultants ng uh, 
at Core Educational Research Center si Dr. Philip Joseph Sarmiento. Kahapon po, ang galing-galing po ni Doc PJ, kahapon po nag-talk naman siya. International po yon mga professionals, mga from different countries, mga researchers, mga professors po ang audience niya. Kaya po napakaswerte niyo kayong mga estudyante na kahit uh, senior high school pa lamang po tayo, uh, we are uh, at Core Educational Research Center is giving you the best the best speakers. Bukas po, napakaswerte nyo rin sa event po bukas, although na-promote na ni Ma'am Alaysa, ang magiging speaker po natin bukas ay walang iba po kundi si Dr. Carvajal. Uh, siya po ang dean ng graduate school ng San Sebastian College Recoletos in uh, Manila. Just imagine na uh, bubuksan mo lang ang uh, Zoom meeting mo and then you will already have Dr. Carvajal with you. And his moderator will be uh, Dr. Santos naman po ng I Academy sa Makati City. So aabangan po namin bukas yan. At syempre po, kayong mga audience namin, kayong mga estudyante, nandito po si Sir Richard, nandito si Ma'am Marie, nandito si Sir Philip, nandito po si, si Dr. Paha, but lahat ng research consultants ng EDCOR, uh, we are existing because of you. Because we would like to serve you because of our advocacy, natulungan po kayo. Kaya nga, kung gusto nyo talagang matuto sa research mga bata, walang excuse. Kasi we're, we're, we are trying to give everything. Ang hindi na lang namin magagawa yung may inject yung knowledge mismo sa diretso, uh, literal na inject sa mga utak ninyo. But uh, maraming tao, maraming mga private sectors, maraming mga organizations like uh, at Core Educational Research Center, uh, we are giving everything na maitutulong namin sa inyo. Pero at the end of the day, it will still be your willingness. Kahit na tumulong kami ng tumulong, kung uh, you are not willing to learn, then uh, ma mahihirapan po tayo dun. Kaya we are very happy na nandito po kayo. So again po, maraming salamat po and uh, masaya po kami na tumutulong kami dito sa EdCore Educational Research Center. Thank you very much po. Okay, dito po sa group ch uh, chat box natin, may mga nag-thank you. Valerio, Sir Randolph, Rito, Christian, Christian Sian, congratulations, Sir PJ. Padi one, thank you, Sir. God bless you. Art, thank you, Sir. Uh, kay Sanchez. Um, Teranya, mahiya in po kasi kami, Sir. <laughs> From Bangwanai, shy type po daw sila. Kaya nagsisend sila ng ano, PM. So, si Cecilio, decent lang daw po. Okay. Thank you po, Sir Doc. Salamat po sa lahat, Doc. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you po. Okay. Oh, maraming nag-thank you, Sir. Thank you, Sir Philip. For Sir Philip. Okay. May nakita ako na nag-post na po nung ating last word. Pero, syempre, let's, ano po, dahil wala pa naman ako sinabing last word. So, after the countdown of 10, yung una pong lalabas sa uh, screen ng chat box, siya po yung winner natin ng 100 pesos load. Okay? Since may, nag, may nag-send na kasi, so kailangan paunahan po tayo after no countdown ko na 10 seconds. Okay? For our last words, it is new knowledge. So you need to complete the sentence and type it. At the count of 10 po, ha? at the count of 10, may nag-send na. In the count of 10. So, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. O, back read tayo kasi nauna lumabas. Yung pong nauna kanina, hindi ko na po siya in, uh, ano, kasi wala pa po yung last word. Ngayon na dyan na yung last word natin, back read tayo kasi sino yung unang nag-send ng sentence. Okay. Congratulations! Congrats. It's a systematized effort to gain new knowledge. Estoy Hazel from SSCR, Manila. Hayes, Estoy Hazel from SSCR, Manila. You won 100 pesos load. Okay? You can privately message me your cell phone number. Pending Globe, Smart, Sun, Cellular, TM. Okay lang tayo dyan. So you just privately message me your contact number. Okay, hihintayin ko yung contact number mo. Walang halong diet. Okay. Congratulations! Okay. So, I would like to ask everyone to please open your camera for the picture taking so that we can see your beautiful and handsome faces. 
So, pwede paki-open po yung camera natin. Ayan, ang gaganda pa lang nila. Sir, tinatago lang nila. <laughs> Di ba? Ang gaganda pa lang nila. At saka ang gagwapo. Tinatago lang, sir. <laughs> Okay, pa-open po ng camera. One, two, three, four. Okay, next. One, two, three, four, five. Yung next natin, ang dami. One, two, three, four, five. And the last one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Yung nanalo kanina, Hazel, paki-PM ako, anak, para privately PM para makuha ko yung number mo, okay? So with that, I would like to thank everyone for staying with us in, in the entire webinar. Thank you, everyone. And this is Marie Eliza Tawazan, your moderator, signing off. Have a good night and God bless us all. Hazel, may iwan ka muna for your...